For thousands of motherfucking years, they've been praying to this motherfucking thing that just keeps killing everybody, torturing everybody, and killing innocent children, and torturing innocent children, right, left, and center, everywhere, all the time, all throughout history. And they're still praying to this motherfucker. The root issue with all of these fucking conflicts that keep popping up over and over and over and over, this pointless fucking bullshit, is because you have a batch of sexually insecure nut jobs who use religion and their imaginary friend as the proxy for their own sexual insecurity, that they can deflect and distract from that in the form of killing and blowing up other people, and oftentimes themselves. And then you have the other motherfuckers on the other side who have had a racist narrative drilled into their skulls for thousands of fucking years, using this as a justification to go forward on their racist narrative of extermination of the other group, combined with worshipping this evil, malevolent motherfucker. <sighs> Need any more be said? Nope, but I always have so much more to say, if you know me. And I'm sure all of you know me very well as a content creator by now. If you've been following these videos and subscribed to this channel for quite a while. So someone asked me about what my opinions are in this current conflict that's going on. It's yet again just another one of these man-created, unnecessary, pointless, bloodshedding, horrible, nightmarish fucking things going on yet again and again and again and again. Do you recall how we talked about how we live in a nightmare hellscape? What is a nightmare hellscape? Well, it's a nightmare hellscape. It's not a cushy, cuddly candy store. It's not a lovey-dovey, sweet, soft place. It's a nightmare hellscape. A nightmare torturescape. While you're experiencing any degree of happiness, there's a gazillion forms outside of your bedroom experiencing torture to death and excruciating pain, physically, mentally, and emotionally. All the time, every single day, everywhere. If not you, somebody else. It's amazing how fast and how quick people forget that we live in a nightmare torture scape. They expect it to be, well, it's not really a nightmare torture scape, and then their house explodes. And then they're screaming with half a leg blown off. It's not a torture scape. Obviously, you would be saving the person who is screaming. You wouldn't be just sitting there only asking them this or trying to compound their pain. You would wait till after they were healed to actually say this to them directly. But as someone aware of this, you would just, you would look at the person if they're screaming to God or praying to God for help or something like this. Praying for something other than a nightmare torture scape to be the reality, right? Which makes sense because we want something other than the nightmare torture scape to be the reality. But if you were look, if you were to look at a person who just the day before told you that, no, I believe reality is good. God is good. God is great. Everything happens for a reason. He works in mysterious ways. And then that person gets their legs blown off the next day from a bombing. And their children get blown up from a bombing or raped or tortured from the enemy troops. And then the next day you ask them, well, is God still good and great? Are we still living in a mixed bag reality that isn't specifically a nightmare torture escape? Well, the other guy would have to concede that as he's screaming in agony over his children being dead and his legs being blown off, he would have to agree, if he has any degree of sanity in him, that he is living directly in a nightmare torture escape. So it's, he's confirming with his own existence what you've been saying the whole time. It's not a cushy, cuddly candy store. It is a what? A nightmare torture escape. And he would have to acknowledge you're accurate in what you're saying. Much to his horror and dismay. 
So it's ama- it's interesting how there's a lot of people that fill the world who will only recognize ever that it's a nightmare torture scape only. And I mean only if they themselves directly or their direct children are tortured in some absolutely horrific way. Then, and only then, when they themselves directly start living in a nightmare torture scape in their own head, in their own physiology, then it registers to them finally, miraculously, that we live in a nightmare torture scape. Finally, then it registers. Whereas before, because they weren't the one being tortured, they were like, oh, eh, we live in a mixed bag reality. A a world of dualities. There's positives, there's goods and bads, and blah, 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 right? Right? Until they're the one being tortured. Then it's a nightmare hellscape all of a sudden. It's like, isn't that interesting how it just becomes a nightmare torture scape somehow? Mystically, when you're the one directly experiencing the torture and the nightmare. Well, well, like, why couldn't you recognize that before or outside of you being the one directly experiencing the nightmare or the torture like I can? So I had a conversation with a fellow content creator recently where... This is more or less the conversation. And I just, I really drilled it in. I was like, the reason I say it's a nightmare torture scape, and this is important that you understand this and me while we're living our pleasure filled lives, comparatively speaking to others, that, that you're aware of vividly that for other beings, most of the time outside of you yourself and your direct experiences, it is a living nightmare torture scape all day, every day as their experience factually. Real talk. And then eventually you got around acknowledging and recognizing that that's what I mean when I say nightmare torture scape. Specifically, that's what I mean. But what that means is that he, myself, any of us at any day, at any time, could be ourselves bombed right here, right now. Boom. And not even killed, but just permanently lifelong disabled in screaming agony every day of our lives, needing to be on pain meds every fucking day. No God to grow limbs back, no God to help, nothing. Nothing outside of technology, transhumanist technology, being able to fix it as time goes on. Nobody else is going to fix it. You ain't going to fucking fix it. You ain't going to grow their fucking legs back, so shut the fuck up. All you people going against, no, we're not going to have transhumanist tech that's going to grow legs back. Yes, we are, so fuck you. You're not going to grow legs back, so shut the fuck up. Are you going to give the person their leg back? Huh? You going to grow it back for them? You going to give them their fucking functionality, their ability to walk back? You going to give them their eternal organ back? Huh? Then shut the fuck up. You ain't going to do jack shit. So quiet. Fucking paranoid dumb fucks who don't understand nuance at all. Even if your life fucking depended on it. who are so dumb you can't even understand the connection between the transhumanist topic and this topic at the same fucking time without me having to explain it and lay it out. Well, why are you talking about this topic and this? Why aren't you just strictly sticking with it? Why are you scattering your... Because intelligent people understand how topics are connected automatically without having to have it explained to them every fucking time. That's why. So this war going on, everybody's praying every fucking day, yet again, to the same motherfucker who never does anything to save anybody. He never does anything to grow a single fucking arm back of a child who lost it. Not one. And it's so bad that even if this entity did grow back one person's fucking arm, it's, it's, that would just add so much more insult to injury. It's like grow back all the arms, not just one of them. Make it a consistent thing in the genetics. Because it'd be like, great, that person saved, but what about the millions of others you never fucking grew the arms back on? And then the dumbass motherfucking people who are trying to defend go, oh yeah, that's exactly the reason why. Because it would be unfair if he grew one arm, but didn't grow back the arms of millions of others. So be fair and grow back all the arms then, you dumb fuck. Just have it be what happens. Just like our body automatically fucking heals to a certain extent from bruises and bumps and little cuts and scrapes, the body of the criminal also heals from cuts and scrapes versus the criminal dying and you not dying. You just have the same consistency with limbs regrowing back. Capiche? 
It's not that fucking complicated. Or have a system where only criminals don't get their limbs grown back. And only good quality kind people do get them grown back. So it'll be an incentive for people to not be motherfucking criminals. You feel me? Be like, hey, you know what? Uh, Us not actually being good quality people leads to our limbs not growing fucking back. So we have to be good people to get our fucking legs back. You see, you see how much better of a system that would be under any kind of intelligent, halfway fucking intelligent, benevolent being. Think about how much more streamlined of a system that would be. (laughs) You just don't get shit back if you've stolen stuff from others, right? It just doesn't come back, but you do get it back if you're a kind person who gives to others, you know? So you give to others and you get your limbs grown back if they disappear. Or how about this? You just have a world where limbs can't be cut off in the first place. Then you just take it all the way back. All the way back to a paradise state where there's no possibility of any of this. The reason none of those scenarios are the case is because reality itself is forever eternally, now and in all of the variations and realms, a nightmare torture scape. Even if you and me, in our deluded arrogance, are experiencing amazing degrees of pleasure, which I am. It's still a nightmare torture scape. For most beings, most of the time. Outside of my little bubble. It doesn't become other than a nightmare torture escape just because my little bubble isn't directly a nightmare torture escape. That doesn't change reality being a nightmare torture escape. Or it doesn't change reality from being that, rather. Of course not. Just immerse in your little bubble of pleasure, and therefore, you'll see that reality is this positive thing as a whole. No, I won't. I'll experience my own experiences as a positive as a whole. But reality, no. My experiences that give me pleasure, yes. Reality, no. Reality as a whole, never. Absolutely not. Two different subject matters. Never mix up the two. It's a grave mistake to wrongly conclude, demonstrably so, that because your containment bubble is hunky-dory, you feel good most of the time, you're happy and enthusiastic, and your hormones are flowing properly, that therefore, reality is just a mixed bag of positives and negatives. And that's just all it is. That's what it consists of. It's called a well-fed fallacy. Okay? A well-fed fallacy delusion. Because when you're in the state of directly starving to death yourself, you no longer have the well-fed fallacy. You're asking, why the fuck can't I get food? And you're really pissed off and you're really angry. You're not saying, oh, reality is this mixed bag. It, is, it just is the way it is. Unless you're absolutely nuts and insane. You're saying, where's the fucking food? God damn it, I'm going to die if I don't have food. Mixed bag. Be gone. To hell with that idea. Well, then you walk up with the person, but you said reality was a mixed bag. Why don't you just remain a neutral, you know, hippie? Why don't you just have a neutral hippie stance to you gradually dying right now of starvation? You know, you'll go out in the middle of nowhere. Somebody's been, you know, like on that show alone. And the person's like literally starving. Together. Why don't you just, you just walk up to him? Why don't you just have a mixed bag perspective though? Why don't you just see life? Let's say in the case where there was nobody going to rescue them, right? Right? There was no help or outside source coming in to make sure that they didn't stay out too long to die of starvation, right? And you go out to them and you ask them as they're actually literally dying. And you say, "You well, you said reality was a mixed bag. That it was it was full of positives and negatives. So why don't you just have like a hippie Zen perspective of right now how horrible it is that you're dying of starvation? Like why... Why do you want me to give you this food that I have in this backpack, this granola bar, this candy bar, whatever? Why? I mean, reality is a mixed bag. I'm just going to walk off with all this food. I don't really have to give it to you because it's it's a mixed bag. You know, you get what you get. Stuff just happens. Stuff just plays out. You know, whatever. It's, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's a mixed bag, right? You said it yourself. So if it's a mixed bag, 
I'm just going to mix up my bag and take off, you know? Sorry. I mean, you just, you just got dealt the wrong hand. You, you're out here needing help and starving to death. I just, I don't feel like helping you today. You know, I'm just going to walk off and not help you because it's a mixed bag. It's just, it's not a torture scape. It's not a nightmare torture scape. That life is just a series of things that go on and you know what happens and stuff. You know, I'm just, I feel a little, a little bit hungry today. Um, uh, you know, so I, I think I'm just going to eat all the food in my backpack. And, you know, I, I think I need it more than you because that's my opinion, you know. So, yeah, I'm just going to eat it myself and whatever, you know. Uh, you know, I'm I'm just kind of neutral in terms of what happens to you. You know, you could starve or, you know, you could succeed. And I, I don't really mind either way. It's fine with me. Have a good one, you know. And just, then they just take off as the person's fucking starving to death and walk off. And just, oh, what, have a good one. See you later. Mixed bag reality, you know, it is what it is, bro. So sayonara, come on, nobody does that shit. It's because nobody actually believes in this mixed bag bullshit fallacy. Yes, the mixed bag idea of reality is a fallacy and I've just demonstrated it to you and I can demonstrate it to you in many other fucking ways. That's just one of a gazillion goddamn examples. And it goes beyond emotions. It's within the realm of logic and rationality a fallacy also. No more of this mixed bag bullshit. I believe reality is a duality and therefore it's neither good or evil, it's neither good or bad. No, motherfucker, I can verify to you right now it's a bad. By just poking at you and annoying you to the point you recognize, hey, actually reality is annoying. Exactly. I'm glad you recognize that, dumb fuck. It took me poking at you to finally fucking have it register. That's what it takes. Cool. At least you understand it's a hellscape now within the annoying emotional sense. Good. You've come to some deeper fucking realization about things. Well done. Bravo. Clap, clap. You know what I mean? You can immediately demonstrate to people. It's very easy to bring them down. It's very easy to show them the negatives of reality right then and there. When we, you know, they're sitting there talking to you. They just go on this mixed bag. You'd be like, all right. And you just grab them and fucking throw them into the fucking water, like freezing cold water that's in front of you guys, you know, middle of winter. And you pull them out and you'd be like, it's a mixed bag. Just chill. What, what are you worried about? You're just freezing. It's just, it is what it is, man. I just felt like throwing you in the fucking freezing water, you know, because I, I thought it'd be funny, you know, and you laughing at them while they're like fucking hypothermic and shit, literally potentially going to die in a few minutes or something because of how cold they are. It's like, you know, reality is a mixed bag. You know, it's like you got people who have sadistic senses of humor like me. You got people who, you know, don't really care about you. Whatever. It's a mixed bag, man. I mean, just chill. Like, ah, chill. Get it? Ha ha ha. Juggle, juggle, juggle. As they're literally chilling to death. Right? It's a mixed bag, right? Not a torture escape. Mixed bag. You just got the shitty under the stick, you know? <laughs> That's why it's called a well-fed fallacy, because it's only well-fed. You could also call it a warm fallacy. If you're freezing of hypothermia, you're not in your head thinking life is a mixed bag. Because you're aware it's not a mixed bag. You're aware it's a fucking nightmare torture scape. God damn it! Why are people so fucking stupid? It's because they're too dumb to separate out an individual containment bubble from reality, from awareness of reality. They can't understand the difference between these two fucking things because they're that fucking stupid. They think their containment bubble equals what reality is. No, it doesn't. The campfire you have built in front of you because of human effort that you built isn't a mixed bag part of the reality. You built it so that you could be warm so that you wouldn't be living in a mixed bag reality, so that you can contain against the nightmare torture scape, actively and intentionally, so that you're not tortured. Capiche? <laughs> Fuck, man. Like, without exception, everybody who's peddled this life is a mixed bag bullshit, I think, I think reality is good and evil both. Narrative, of some variation, is always somebody who's reasonably either well-fed, reasonably warm, 
at that moment, reasonably warm at the moment they're fucking saying that shit. Okay? In some reasonable situation of coziness, sort of. At least. And thus they promote that crap. Okay? People in the thick of the nightmare hellscape don't promote that bullshit. It's the last thing on their minds. Why? Because it is bullshit. Because it's not a reflection of what? Give it to me. Reality, bitch. That's why. Which kills you if you don't contain against it. Which tortures you if you don't contain against it. In the form of hunger. In the form of thirst. In the form of needing to breathe air. Otherwise you suffocate in misery. And they're too dumb to understand the horror of needing to breathe air, of needing to drink water, of needing to eat food, of having urges in the first place that need to be fulfilled. They don't even understand the horror of that. Of how fucked up that shit is. Because they're too fucking stupid. Too stupid. Too motherfucking stupid to get it. Because as long as they have air to breathe, and as long as they have water to drink, and good quality tasting food to eat, and a comfy bed to sleep on, and good quality sex, they think reality isn't, isn't a torture scape anymore. Because they're that fucking stupid. I don't think that. I'm aware reality is a torture scape, even when I'm in the midst of those things. Because I'm not that fucking stupid. I'm aware of what a containment bubble is, how it operates. How does it operate? It contains you from experiencing things that aren't within that containment bubble. Like a fucking space mask or a helmet you wear over your head when you're flying high in the sky. It's a container. Just like any other container inside the container, are things going on that aren't happening outside the motherfucking container. Too stupid. Too fucking stupid, man. I'm just at my wit's end with people trying to pull that bullshit of the whole it's a mixed bag until they're getting their bodies blown up narrative, you know? No, it isn't. And you keep demonstrating it every time something really bad happens to you. You keep demonstrating firsthand, it's not just a mixed bag, a mixture of good and evils. No, it's a hellscape, and you're experiencing that. So because it's a hellscape, no matter what, that's what it is, period. People use God, their imaginary friend, as a cope and as a delusion to deny and avoid facing the reality of the nightmare torture scape that is all of reality, not just this current reality, because they can't fucking handle anything else, psychologically, emotionally, or otherwise. That's why. So they have to have a God somewhere out there or inside in the depths of your heart and soul who cares and loves you about you beyond this world and it will transcend you beyond your fleshly body and state and blah, 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 blah. Or your actual deeper self, you, your own God, your own super soul, hyper individualistic shining beingness, you beyond this nightmare hell hellscape. It's a cope. Because it's a redundancy principle and it's irrelevant whether that exists or not. That's also the part they don't understand because they're too fucking stupid. Redundancies. Redundant. You can make a whole song out of that shit. Every redundancy principle, you just fucking make a song, you know? It's redundant. It is irrelevant. Do, 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 do. And cover every single fucking redundancy and irrelevancy that's ever existed in all of philosophy ever throughout human history. God and the soul included. 
top of the list. A redundancy means whether it exists or not, even if it does exist, it's still irrelevant because reality remains a nightmare torture escape, even if God exists, even if the soul exists, even if there's a benevolently intended being that exists, it's all redundant, it's all irrelevant because here we are, here this still is, here this is still possible. Capiche? There you have it. That's how it goes. Yet people fill entire fucking forums online. They fill entire videos, entire documentaries filled with these redundancy principles that are irrelevant even if they're fucking true. Because they didn't prevent the child from being tortured to death this time. You got it? So when people ask me about these different conflicts throughout the world, you need to understand and you need to zoom it immediately into, is the conflict connected to people longing for or praying for some God being to fix things or have some ultimate utopia that he or it grants them, etc.? Is that going on? Number one. Now, if that isn't going on, and it's a secular war, kind of more like what's going on in Ukraine versus Russia, people may individually have religions, but the war itself is more or less secular. If that's the situation, then once again, we live in a nightmare torture scape, a nightmare hellscape. That's why you shouldn't bring kids here, because your kid might be the one to get blown up tomorrow. Just like the kids in Ukraine were. And the kids in Gaza are. And the kids in Israel are. Got it? Does it make sense? Of course it makes sense. Because where do you live? You live where? Say it to me. Tell me. You live in a nightmare torture scape. You don't live in a cuddy, cushy, cuddly, lovey-dovey candy store. You would never have. You've just lived in a containment bubble which deluded you to thinking reality wasn't a nightmare torture escape. That's all. That's it. That's all the kids lived in. That's all these other families ever lived in. It's containment bubbles. Delusional containment bubbles that delude them to think something other than is the case about reality. To be tuned out from the nightmare torture escape that they're directly contributing to in so many ways via their diet every day and in so many other ways that they don't even fucking realize because they're in a containment bubble mentally, psychologically, emotionally, and otherwise, which they should remain in, but they should also understand outside the containment bubble. They need to understand what is outside of that bubble. They need to understand that reality isn't just this bubble. This little bubble it's just a little floaty boaty little thing floating around in reality. But reality is outside the motherfucking bubble, goddammit. But they only become aware of that when it happens to them, when their bubble is popped. When the pokey thing goes into the bubble, then and only then do they become aware that it's a hellscape. Oh my god! Bubble popped! Whoa! I had no idea reality was this bad. I always philosophically thought that reality was this mixed bag of good and evils. And oh my God, it's so horrible. It's actually way worse than I ever imagined. I could never imagine myself or others being tortured, even though it's happened in gazillions of cases outside of myself directly. I could never imagine it happening to me. I can imagine it happening to others in some random ass part of the world somewhere else, but never to me. Me! It couldn't happen to me! I can understand how it can happen to the animal in the slaughterhouse and the kid down the street five miles away, but how could it happen to me? Or my kids? How? Oh. We're so goddamn fucking special and divinely protected! It's not supposed to happen like this! You need to hear me out! It's not supposed to happen like this! For fuck's sake, man. 
This is why we said you shouldn't fucking have kids. Bring them here. The bodies are laying blown up. Splatter in the, the fucking street. That's why you said you shouldn't do it in the first fucking place. Now you're screaming like you're surprised. <sighs> Come on. I would only be that hard ass with someone who is a total shithead hard ass to me before their kid got blown up. I would only drill it in then if the person was a really bad quality person interactively. For most people, I wouldn't be that harsh. I would just be like, yes, it's fucked up. And I would just be firm, confirm the point without, but I would, I would be really, I would drill it into a motherfucker if they were like vile personality wise before that. I'd be like, exactly, you sick fuck. That's why you shouldn't have had the kid. Now you're here crying and screaming and their body's blown up in front of you. What'd you fucking expect? You brought them into this torture scape. In your dumbass fucking delusion, you thought that they would be in a containment bubble outside of the torture that you directly imposed on them of guaranteed disease and death. Come on. Give me a fucking break. Have it register now. Does it register now? Is now the time to finally have it register? Do you now finally see that reality is a nightmare torture escape now that it's happened to someone you love? Do you get it now? Good. But even then, they still don't get it. They never, ever, 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 ever get it. They don't fucking understand it. It doesn't register. It never registers. Because forever they think, oh, these little containment bubbles exist within reality where we can just be happy-dappy, yappy, Yada, yada, good food, which often includes dead animals on their plates and blah, blah, blah. We can just always be hunky-dory and everything's good and everything feels great. My cock feels great inside my wife's holes and blah, 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 blah. And yeah, reality, you know, it's full of goods and bads and blah, 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 blah. As they're living in their suburbs with a, a low crime rate, you know? Their suburbs with a low crime rate, the totally artificialized area they live in, equals reality somehow. Sure. Sure. Then a couple cities down, you have people blowing each other's heads off randomly. Gang warfare, you know, retaliations that are over the top. Children while they're playing outside getting shot dead by Uzis and shit like that. You're like, ah, it's so nice we have this picnic today. You know, reality itself is such a wonderful mixture isn't it it's such a beautiful balanced mixture of just positive experiences and negative ones you know i'm sorry you're having issues with your wife and or your girlfriend but you know just look at the bright side you've still got your long fat cock you've still got your house you've got your bed you've got me you know speaking as if you know some female talking to another person or whatever right You've got me in your life, a good quality friend who cares about you and loves you. Hint, 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 wanting to get in your pants and blah, 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 right? So reality is just, it's this amazing balance, the balance of nature, the balance of life. Yes, bad things sometimes happen to some people in some places, but overall, if you just look at the bright side and stay focused on your suburban little area, of containment bubble, you know, uh, reality is a pretty good thing. <laughs> it really is. You know, reality is a pretty good thing. Unfortunately, my mom's dying now in the hospital, surrounded by relatives who care about her. Uh, you know, she's dying of cancer. It's it's unfortunate, but it's, you know, it's just the part of life and blah, 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 blah. La, 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 la. Ooh. And then on Sunday, they go to church. Holy, holy, holy. Please save my mother from the cancer you imposed on her, God. And if you don't save her, work in your mysterious ways to bring her to your imaginary kingdom in the clouds, beyond the clouds, in the transcendent space within our heart. Somewhere beyond this world, inside or outside of us, or both at the same time. Because <sighs> you're so fucking amazing in your invisibility and your eternal mysteriousness and never fixing anything. Oh, God. <laughs> you're so wonderful. Thank you for my family and my suburban house. 
and the low crime rate. I, I really appreciate the low crime rate. Thank you. So with that, I will talk to you soon. PP signing out and plunging in to actual motherfucking reality and bursting all your motherfucking little containment bubbles just enough to holler into them, hey, motherfucker, there's a reality outside of your containment bubble. Have a good one.